What's up, everybody? You're watching the Stock Market Beef Show. My name is Michael Silva. We use technical analysis, intermarket analysis, to get a good idea as to where the market might be heading next. Look, there is so much conflicting information out there right now. We have very, very intelligent people on one side saying that the market is getting ready to melt up to unbelievable levels and then crash. And then we have other very, very smart people on the other side saying that we're already in the bear market. The market is on its way to crash. What do we do with all this information? I talk about that in detail on this show quite frequently. It's all about managing risk and doing what's right for you. You know, it's not just as easy as flipping up a coin and hoping it'll land on heads multiple times in a row. You need to have a plan for if it lands on tails. So let's go ahead and just hop into today's show to look at some of these charts. All righty, everybody. Welcome back. We're going to start off with the dashboard. Then we're going to get into the daily charts, then the 15 minute charts to kind of zoom in a little bit, right? The market's been bouncing, but where are we bouncing to? We're going to be discussing that. I'm going to get into some signal charts here momentarily too. And then I'm going to wrap it up in the conclusion section as well. Um, so be sure to stay to the conclusion because I'm going to have some bottom charts, um, uh, market indicators for bottom charts, bottom finding updated. Now, how did the S&P 500 and 11 sectors of the S&P 500 do today? Energy was the standout materials and second financials. And then we had the defensive names towards the bottom of the list. And I'll tell you what, um, a lot of my stocks and my watches are all from uh, actually more defensive names. And the setups look fairly well. There's some, definitely some energy names in there too. But it is interesting to see this kind of risk on type of play today in the markets. However, when you just look at the left side of the screen, I mean, there wasn't that much price action overall in the indices up until pretty much the end of day, um, which was something that I was closely paying attention to. Um, now, going into tomorrow, what can we expect? Well, we have some big earnings taking place that just happened, right? So Google, after hours, talk about a huge move. This is going to help out the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100, right? The Qs, if it continues to hold into these levels or perpetuate further to the upside, that is a gigantic move. So clearly the market likes what it heard. On the other side of the spectrum, we have PayPal and PayPal reported earnings. It's not going to hold nearly as much as weight as Google will in the market, but you can see, um, I was looking at the expected move earlier and it was pricing at about a $14. You can see that's clearly more than $14 move. So multiple standard deviations. And when we get you know, two standard deviations from what the market was pricing in, it can get very, very hectic. And that can go up or down as we've just seen recently there in Google. If we just quickly take a look at the dollar, the dollar backed off still a little bit today. What help, What did that help? Well, I mean, it could very well help the S&P 500 continue to perpetuate itself to the upside. And it definitely helped gold, which we'll get into here momentarily. But overall, the dollar, UUP, they're still in an uptrend, okay? So there's still the possibility that the dollar stalls out right here around the 200 day or at 96 and starts bouncing. And then all of a sudden this might come up still more like it's possible, right? But then it might start to go into some sort of consolidation or pullback. All right. We're going to talk about that in the daily charts and the 15 minute charts. You can see here gold had a decent day today, right? Up only 0.28%, but it still remained positive as it still remains in this technical pattern here. Oil hasn't been doing much the last four trading days. Still watching out for this right here. I'm still looking at it as a potential short, but I'd be shorting USO, but it still hasn't been confirmed yet. Negative divergence, and it's like it's hanging on by a thread right here. So perhaps if we start getting under 86, you know, it's just an extended run from these moving averages right here. I would, I would imagine it has to take a little bit of a breather, but it hasn't yet. So you got to respect that, right? Wait, wait for the signal. Um, TNX did saw, you know, 10-year yield, a little bit of a move today, but it didn't really affect the markets all too much. Now, keep in mind, you know, a rapid rate of change to the upside does affect the market. So if, if this starts backing off, I would imagine that would actually help out the markets, uh, especially the big tech stocks, right? If this starts backing off here. So we'll see if that is the case. Now, this really did, this move in the TNX helped out financials, right? So we saw this move up and financials was one of the top performing sectors, right? It was top three. And financials really does move hand in hand for the most part with energy. And we can see both of them did pretty well. Um, a chart that I don't actually have up right now at this particular point in time, but when you actually look at the when you look at the TNX or the 10 year yield and then you measure it side by side with the relative strength line between XLE to the SPY right 
or the SPX. Okay, if you look at this relative strength line compared to the TNX, they literally, they move hand in hand. So when the 10-year yield goes up, the relative strength of energy continues to outperform. So if this actually starts to back off, I would actually expect energy and financials obviously to start backing off there too as well. Let's hop into crypto really quick because I haven't talked about it. Sailor to shift ratio is still turning up right here at this point. So that's good so far, right? For anybody that wants to be in crypto, um, still hasn't crossed above the zero line, right? The last time it crossed below it was right here. That was a sell signal and it hasn't crossed above since. So it got us out on time. Just keep in mind, this isn't a holy grail, although it feels like it at some times, right? Looking back in hindsight, but always know that, you know, it wait for the signal, right? It, and then you have to have a weekly close above there. It has to get above the prior week candle. That's at least my strategy. You can do whatever you want. Um, and then you have to just wait for the next sell signal. And if it stops out, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean that it's going to see some crazy run uh, by any means. However, we've caught some pretty nice runs, right? And it saves us from some big moves to the downside. So you can use it as a tool, not as you know, a go all in sort of you know mentality, right? If we take a look at the chart of Bitcoin, you know, I'm rooting for the bulls here, but it just doesn't look good. I mean, it, it looks like a bounce, right, into an area of resistance, and it looks like it's flagging right now. And we've seen these type of, you know, moves play out before. I remember all the excitement right here. And we call that out too. And it boom to the downside, right? P big pull on big volume. Now it's floating up here on declining volume. The last couple of days saw a little bit better volume. And then the relative strength line is still well below that 50 period moving average. So, you know, it's, it's just... There's a, like a lack of setups in the market right now. It's it's a very difficult time to be in the markets, unfortunately, right? Ethereum, and this happens. So as long as we're protecting capital, that's that's what matters most at this particular point in time too. Really matters all the time. Uh, Ethereum, also, uh, this is catching a little bit more of a bounce. So it's looking pretty strong, right? But just keep in mind just how straight up and vertical of a bounce this is. Do you really think that it's just going to go like this? I mean, we've seen crazy things like that before, right? But I just don't, I'm just not counting on that to take place as it's below these key moving averages and they're starting to really slope down here. Um, the 200 is still sloping up, but it's starting to flatten out to neutral. And if price stay, continues to stay below there, it's going to continue to start to curl itself over. Uh, meanwhile, it's still well below the 50 period moving average on the relative strength line between Ethereum and the S&P 500. So you know, it's very similar to Bitcoin, right? We're tagging the 20 period moving average. We did that before right here. And then we started selling off. This gave us hope and then it sold off, right? Um, it, you just, once again, you got to be careful. Can I see it go higher? Yeah, um, I could see this potentially running into this area, right? That's always possible. Just like 30, uh, you know, 3,000, 3,050, 3,100, that kind of zone there. So that's something to watch out for. Um, but as it stands right now, you, I, I wouldn't want it to go straight up, actually, to be quite honest. I would want to see it consolidate and, you know, start basing out, like, so, you know, and, and, and creating something where people are like, oh, look at it, it's a, you know, a bottoming pattern or you're, it's putting in higher lows and then all of a sudden it pops out. That, you know, something like that versus going just straight up and chasing it up, right? These moves, okay, very similar to what we'll talk about on the daily charts, which is next. These moves, they die, the, the energy dies out. At some point, right, people like buy in here. They're like, yeah, I caught it. But then you have other people chase, 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 chase. And then all of a sudden there's no more chasers. And then you get other people that caught this big bounce dump into it. And then you have people up here that are trapped supply also be like, oh, the price is almost coming back. I'm just going to get out. All right. And that's what creates, what creates some big volume breaks to the downside. Let's look at the daily charts. All right, so these are the weekly ranges. Um, the weekly ranges, if you don't know what those are, it's what the options market price in the prior week. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make a video about this here soon, right? I've been working on this technical analysis course and it's just been a you know a thorn in my side trying to make sure that it's good and I'm giving it out for free on YouTube, but I'm gonna make another, I'm gonna make a video about this here too as well, um, just to give you an idea of like, okay, what's the risk going into next week? And um, it gives us this range and the, uh, the Theo trade team, Don Kaufman came up with, uh, a study basically saying that 70% of the time, just under that price will land within this, within this range. And it's just been very volatile. The range is very large, which means expect a lot of movement. And you can see we're already almost there to the upper range right now. Can it bump its head? Can it go past it? Yes, it can go past it, right? These aren't support and resistance lines. You can create trade plans around it if it's part of your strategy. Um, and just, I mean, just look, right? We're still within, well within what the market priced in. We're just coming up to the upper range here. If we get well above it, if that happens, right, new hedging takes place and you can get actually bigger squeezes. But from a move like this to go straight up even further, I mean, like we've seen crazy stuff happen, but 
you know, just be very cautious uh, um, currently in this environment because last week what we saw was it came right back to, to the downside and we're like, oh, it's crashing and then came closed right on the week, um, just basically flat uh, from the, uh, the open. Now, if we take a look at the Qs, the Qs is now bumping its head on the upper range, right? We talked last, you know, yesterday's video is like the stock market's about to bump his head. Uh, well, we're bumping our head today, right? So um, we're at the upper range right now. We're at the 200-day moving average. We're, you know, it was a, a significant sell-off. That was a huge move. And now we're starting to see a bounce. This is where it gets interesting is a lot of people are like, this is the beginning of the melt-up, which I'll show you, you know, David uh, Contrarian, David Hunter posted a, a tweet, which I'll share here momentarily, um, that, you know, this is the start of the melt-up. But the unfortunate thing is like, Okay, what happens if it comes down and takes this low? Is, is does that mean you know? My thought is okay. So is the melt up? Is that still the start of the melt up? Or now are you going to change and say okay? Well, now I'm going to postpone that prediction, and now it might come later, um, and I'm altering this and that. So you, you know, the best thing to do in these environments, you need to plan for risk. You know, regardless of you want him to be right or you want him to be wrong, or if you want somebody else who's saying like the market is going to roll over to be right or wrong, you still need a plan both ways. Any way you look at it, you still need a plan. So uh, when I say there's a lot of noise, um, there is. And the confidence is very alluring um, to, to many traders and many people. But just because they're very confident about their predictions doesn't mean that they're always going to be right. Doesn't mean that they're going to change their mind, right? What you need to do is focus on you and what you can control. And the only thing that you can control in this market is risk. Okay, so um, yeah, where are we right now? 365, very strong move. Google just reported earnings, right? I can see this coming outside of this, potentially even up to 375. Um, so we'll keep watching these little levels up here, 375 to 380. We'll get into the 15 minute time frame here momentarily, but um, we'll just be just be mindful. We're already um, in the happy place as it stands right now uh, from a risk range perspective. Uh, IWM also bumping its head, right? So we're getting a lot of head bumps here. A little positive divergence, right? We undercut this previous low and then we ripped right to the very top, okay? So we're starting to see a pretty strong rally off the bottom. We still have a lot of trap supply up here, okay? Um, today, the options market, I saw three big orders, you know, 10,000 uh, call contracts uh, on one, on 200, on the 200 strike. And then I saw another uh, 10,000 um, at the 210 strike. And then I saw another 10,000 at the 220 strike. So, you know, I, I don't know exactly what they were positioning for, but I just saw them as just call orders. So, you know, perhaps, you know, you know, that could potentially move the markets and they're seeing they're 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 going ahead and say basically, and this was for like February, like mid-February, I think it was, February 18th. They believe that the market's gonna be coming up into back into the middle of the channel. And you know, to be quite honest, if you look at this risk range, well, we broke out. And we came right back into the middle of the channel. We broke down. Could we come right back into the middle of the channel? Sure. Yeah, it's it's more than possible. Um, we're seeing a pretty strong rally out of the gates. But just just be mindful that we are already at the upper range right now. As it stands, um, the next level of resistance if we want to keep continuing to move is about 210. That was that stubborn level right here multiple times as support. Okay. And support can become resistance, right? DIA also making a big run to bump its head up here at the upper range too as well, which aligns up with you know, just about that gap fill. And this is such a strong move. Oh my goodness. And I'll tell you one thing, you know, this isn't normal market functioning by any means, right? This is, this is crazy. Like this is just a very significant move. One thing that I haven't even called out yet is just paying attention to the volume, right? So we broke down on large, large volume. This goes with all those indices. And now we're starting to rip rally higher on declining volume. So what do you, what does that mean? Well, it doesn't tell us much at this point, but what a down day can tell us is a lot. Because if we see a down move and all of a sudden volume fires off, that right there is a very bearish sign, right? Because clearly right now it's diverging, the volume's diverging, but that's, that's fine. But if we start to see high volume breaks, you know, that could just be more force selling and continue to perpetuate more movement to the downside. Okay. So as it stands right now, we're still within a range. RSI is back above that 50 level and we're just below that 50 day moving average. Let's hop into some 15 minute charts. These ones don't look nearly as bad. Look, we got some really tight VCP patterns. I was watching that intraday. I posted that one on the discord, like with on a five minute chart or two minute chart, as soon as it broke out and we did get some movement to the upside. Are we going to get follow through? I don't know. This volume shelf profile is something that I'm looking at right here. 
right at about 457.50. Honestly, I think that with Google earnings, I think it's very possible that we gap up and start to move a little bit higher if it holds. But if it starts coming off hard and fast, I think that that's going to have an effect not only on this SPY, but it could have effect on other tech stocks, which kind of, you know, roll everything together um, in the SPY. Now, a lot of, you know, I was asked earlier, you know, what was going on here in this big rally, what was pushing it? Um, it was financials. Financials at the end of the day started really ripping higher and that was really helping out the SPY. Um, and, you know, I don't have an answer as to why they were ripping um, significantly. Maybe it had to do with the 10-year yield. So if the 10-year yield wants to back off, like we were talking about recently, um, that could have an effect on financials. However, even if financials come off and tech starts to move higher, that could still kind of hold the SPY together and potentially just kind of like float a little bit higher. But boring day in the markets overall. But uh, one thing to call out too is, Obviously, we have that low, a higher low. We're above the five-day moving average, and we started to consolidate. That is what we want to see, right? So even if it comes off back down to 442, as long as this five-day moving average starts to pick up and start to trend higher and higher, that's going to be better and better for the SPY. And same thing goes with the Qs, right? We're back above it, very tight day, broke out towards the end. A low, a higher low, a higher low. Now we're up in this range. We broke through this previous little area of resistance. 362.50, right? This looks like it wants to start curling over. RSI, you know, it could stay overbought for a while and it's kind of getting up there again. I can imagine if we get a gap up, it's you might see some selling into it. Um, uh, you know, it's... <laughs> We need to, we still need more time here to decide what's going to be taking place as this is bumping its head to that upper range, uh, upper risk range. Doesn't mean it can't go higher, right? But start looking at 370, um, 372.50, just right in this area, that volume shelf profile and where this previous price action was right there to um, potentially, potentially have a little bit of overhead resistance. IWM started to break out of this little stubborn area, right? Resistance, resistance, resistance. And then it acts as resistance again. And then towards the end of the day, it started to break free. And let me see here. Oh, let me hit the lead. And you can see it's back above its five-day moving average. It's going to neutral, right? So overall, it's, they're still in a downtrend, but they're starting to go to neutral. They can start to pick up. So that's a positive sign. It's a positive development um, as it stands right now there for small caps as well. So, uh, you know, it goes with all of these and it kind of it doesn't go without saying but just just pay attention to the ranges that it's in right it is still in a channel right and it's at the upper range and they could come outside of the channel and come right back in and you can see it's just been boom 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 so like don't like don't rule this to continue to happen as volatility is still relatively high okay um, let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Also popped through this little stubborn resistance right there as it was just pretty much just getting tighter and tighter throughout the day. RSI is getting a little frothy right there, so a gap up could get some selling into the early morning. We have one gap above us right over here. Um, we have another one actually a little bit higher. So that can act as resistance as well as this little volume shelf profile right at about 356. So 356 to 358 looks like it could be some overhead resistance there for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And that does line up um, to where? It lines up to right here on the upper edge of that expected move. Let's hop into some signal charts. So we've been talking about these positive divergences. They're playing out still, right? Still, still has room to run. Right, it's not overextended by any means. This is the one for the BPSPX, for the BPNDX. It's moving quickly to that oversold territory, um, overbought territory. I apologize, but it's still not there yet. Still potentially has room to run. And then the, the Nasdaq Composite also still potentially has room to run as this bullish divergence is playing out too as well. Uh, really quick on the VIX. VIX got crushed. RSI is getting pretty extended to the downside. Um, we still have a gap beneath us, so. Look to potentially get this gap filled here. Um, it's always a possibility. That would definitely perpetuate the S&P 500 higher, right? So if we do Google holds and it does, you know, put great weight on the Qs and the SPY, perhaps we get a gap down and we fill this tomorrow. Um, you know, that'd be a pretty sig significant move down, but then that would also get very, very overextended. So don't rule out a very volatile day, right? All right, let's uh, wrap this all up together and kind of just give you my thoughts once again. So first and foremost, the tweet from David Hunter, this is what he said. And obviously this guy's extremely intelligent, um, and his confidence is very alluring to a lot of people, but uh, he, he said that the melt-up is underway. So as I previously, as I said previously, I expect it to be a broad, steep rally with both growth and value and large caps playing. Um, 
large and small caps playing. Semis, fang stocks, industrials, airlines, autos, commodities, uh, includes copper and steel, miners, financials, and even small cap tech will perform well. Um, and then on the other side of the spectrum, we do have other people saying that this is the start of, you know, um, I'm trying to think of people. I mean, there's so many people that say it. Uh, the Hedge Eye team, they believe that it's moving into their quad four model, which quad four um, is more of a defensive type place to be in, right? That's where you want to look at gold and where you want to look at the dollar. Um, and you see stuff like these, what he's saying, go way up, uh, are typically are the ones that sell off um, even harder. So you have very smart people on both sides of these spectrums kind of just tugging back and forth with absolute confidence. And when that takes place, what you need to do is kind of just be like, okay, if one of these people are right, am I going to have a plan to capture some of that move, right? So if he's right, are you going to have a plan to capture some of this move? But if, you know, quad four, right, or what Hedge Eye says, um, quad four takes place, are you, going to, are you going to protect yourself from that downside? And the answer should always be yes, because you need to focus on risk, right? It's like I said, it's very alluring to just go to one side, one side, and then hold, you know, your beliefs, but one of them's going to be wrong, right? So you need to be able to adapt very quickly if one of them proved to be wrong. All right. Now, a couple of things that I want to call the bottom the bottom uh, finders that I use, it's getting to 0.06 reading. So it is reading pretty darn close to a bottom, right? Now, in in uh, 2018 to 2019, right, we saw this, it, it stretched a little bit lower. And the reason why I'm saying that is another chart here I'll show momentarily. We're still not there at a 0.05 reading, but it looks like we're going to reach there um, potentially by weekend. We'll see, right? This is a weekly chart. Um, the bottom finder, it clacked. Uh, clicked there down below that 20 level. So the bottom, this finds a bottom more, uh, you know, more significant when it starts running back up through 35. So we don't know if this is going to start going like that. And that could feed to, you know, David Hunter's thing, where if this starts ripping up higher, we could very well, this was the bottom and we start to see some sort of a melt up. Okay. Um, the next chart that I want to quickly show is the Pring Bottom Fisher. Pring Bottom Fisher is still heading pretty much down straight now. Uh, Usually you'd see this start to curl a little bit. I mean, we're starting to see a pretty big move to the upside, but it hasn't even it hasn't even start to curl a little bit. And you know, it's not even down at these extended readings for being a pretty big sell-off, which is a little concerning. But I guess you know, it, you know, it's nothing's perfect. Um, the last one here. I also want to point out that the the Nizi is still pointing pretty much straight down, has a little bit of a curl in it right here, uh, but it's still bearish momentum to the downside. You can see the Nymont that started bouncing off this overextended area, a reading below 300, and it's bouncing. That happens, um, especially on those low readings. But if you get these readings together, we have seen boom bounces and sell offs, and we saw this is the one that I want to show you that reminded me of 2018 is we got that reading and then it started to rip higher, but you can see here we bounced nicely, we came back down, undercut the low, and then we just started range trading for quite some time before a broader sell-off. So that is always there in the uh, as a possibility. And the same thing goes for here in um, early 2018 where they crossed together and we saw this run up, this started to curl back over, and then we saw a nice big move and everyone started cheering, but keep in mind it just, it's sold right back off for a double bottom. So it's a very turbulent time, right? So you need to have a plan once again for both cases, right? You have it, you want to have some side of some sort of exposure to the upside, but make sure that you're getting into something that gives you that when you're backing into the risk, right? It gives you a good risk to reward. And then just in case the market does completely tumble over, you need an exit strategy. And you need to be somewhere that's safe, obviously, to protect your capital. That's all I got for you on today's episode, everybody. Have a wonderful night.